Hello, here I'm going to show you an example of creating buttons inside of Storyboard Designer. So I'm going to show you two different examples that are very commonly used. The first example is I have a graphic artist or designer who gave me an up and a down press state for my button. And the other example is where I only have the up state and I have to create the feel of a down state by using alpha blending. So if we come to the first one, I'm going to show you. We'll actually use these two buttons here, this black play button and this orange play button. So I'll drag out the black play button and we see him here and what I'm going to do is upon a, upon a press I'm going to change him to be the orange button upon a release I'll move him back to the black button so we'll first change his name to be play button just so we keep everything with nice context of what everything is we're now going to come down inside of his properties and see that his image is a static value set to be the black play button so we don't want that, we'd like him to be a variable because we're going to change it. So I'm going to move it to a dynamic value. Seeing it doesn't exist yet, I will create him. So we'll call it play image, set to a type of an image, and the current value is the black play button. We move to next, we give him a local scope of control, which is the default, and finish. So now we've created the variable, we make sure it's selected to him, and there we go. So now inside of our variables view, we see the play image variable. It's currently set to be the black play button, and it's the context of the play button itself. So we come back to properties. Now we see that the image is set to, an to a variable. We can tell that because it's green. It shows the variable name here. It's at a scope of control, and it's called play image. And green means it's resolved, so it actually exists inside the database. If you set it to a variable that didn't exist, it would be red or if we created attached to a variable and then deleted the variable through the variables view. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to decide on the events to trigger this button to change its look. So we come into here and we say actions. So we're going to add some actions. So we're going to come down and we're going to pick three events here that will cause our actions to do the data change. The first one will be the press. So when I press I like to move to the orange button. The second will be the release. On the release I want to move back to the black button. And the third will be the outbound. This is if somebody pushes down on the button and then moves outbound of the image, I would like him to move the button back to its up state. So we click next here. The action that will happen on these is a data change because we'll be changing the variable. And then we come next. We select the variables we'd like to change. In this case, there's only one variable, the play image, but you could have multiple variables you change all upon one event. We go next, we keep the scope as the default control, and there we come back. Now in our actions view, you can see that we have a outbound, a press, and a release, all causing data changes, all with the context of play button. If we look down below here, we can see they're all changing the value of play image, but they're by default set to be setting to the black value. This is fine for the release and the outbound, but for the press, we'd like to actually change that value to be the orange button. So you can actually come in here and say, click on him and therefore we have it so upon the press we move the play image to be the orange button on the release we move it back to be the black button so now we can actually just say what we've done here and come to the storyboard simulator and run him just to verify everything's happening exactly as we expect so on the press we see the button turn orange on the release we see it turn black if I press down and move outside the context of the control you see that outbound event hit and he moves it back back to the black button so now we'll show you the other one which is almost identical except we're going to change something else the alpha instead of the image name so if I take this blue button drag him out here we have the button inside of here if we come to properties and click on the blue button we can call him blue button this time we're going to ignore his image name because the image will never change and we're going to come down to the alpha value we'll select him change it to a dynamic value say new variable and we're going to call it button alpha spell it correctly too we'll move over he'll stick with the scope of control and finish so now he's set to there to be a variable you see the button alpha exists inside the variables. You notice you don't see the play image anymore, and it's because he's on the context of the button. So if when we're on the play button, we see him. 
and when we're on this guy we only see the variables that are at his context level. If something was at a layer, screen, or application level, we would see those inside of here too, so anybody of a greater context would also be shown. But when we leave the context as local, they're sort of like local variables inside of a function. So if we move back to properties here, we'll see the alpha is green, and it's resolving to the variable button alpha. So now once again, we'll add our actions. So we come in, we add the actions that we stated before, the press, the release, and the outbound. Move to our next screen. Once again, it will be a data change. And the variable this time will be button alpha. On that, we leave it at the context of control once again, and we select finish. So it's exactly the same as last time. The press, the release are all changing the variable by default set to what it was set to, 100%. So this time we're going to say on a press, we will change him to 50%. So when the image is pressed, the alpha value will change to 50%. And on a release, we will change to 100%. So we save that and look at it inside the simulator. You can simply see it here and once again on the press the button looks muted because the alpha value has moved to 50% and on release it moves back to 100% and once again the outbound value happens so if we drag the mouse on a press outside the context it will move back to where it was.